Hello and welcome back, I'm Bebo Joe and this is another tutorial for Worker Sent Resources Soviet Republic. Today I want to concentrate on dry bulk conveyors and how to use them. Hey there, how's it going? So, let's go to the basic first. There are three types of connection. There is a passive connection that is usually a storage like this one, this one, or this one. There is an active connection which is generally an engine like this one. And then there is a factory connection that is like this one. The factory connection is special and I explain the differences now. First, a passive connection like this one cannot push or pull anything. They're just there, you cannot push through them. Nothing happens with them, they just exist. They need someone to pull the material in. An active connection like the conveyor engine can pull from one side and push to another side. Makes perfect sense, right? You, you supply some power and it will move stuff around. The factory connection is a little funky because it's not really an engine, but it's not really passive either. What it does is everything that's directly connected to the factory itself will just be an extension of its internal storages. In this case, there's a coal storage, a gravel storage, and a cement storage. What this thing does is it will expand its 75 ton internal coal storage by this by this uh, small aggregate storage, which is 870 tons, and that's how much it can actually store in coal now. And as you can see, coal is flowing even though there's no engine here, so it actively pulls stuff in. It also actively pushes stuff out. You can see it there, but there is cement flowing into this uh, storage unit, and that is probably a good thing. So that's active and passive. And, um, well, factory, there you go. Now. For conveyors, there are a couple extra things. I recommend that you go check out the actual conveyor tutorial because now we're gonna concentrate on uh, the dry bulk. For dry bulk, nothing goes into here. You have a direct connection there, you have a direct connection here, but nothing flows into the dry bulk storage. That is relatively interesting. But can we get something here? Yes, you can. If you put an engine right after the factory, the factory, again, is just pushing out something into all the connected areas because they're extensions of their internal storage. If you put an engine here, the engine will pull, push stuff through. If we now look at this dry bulk storage over there, it actually has stuff being pushed into it. I'm gonna reset these to zero just so you can see what actually happens there. So both are at zero. They both get cement pushed in pretty easy. So this engine has the power to push two levels deep. That is this one that's level one and everything that's connected to this one will be level two. If you add another engine in there, that just resets to another two levels. So currently we're pushing only to this guy, uh, but there's nothing stopping us from adding any more um, extra storages behind here. So for example, if we put one here, well, this one's gonna get some cement too. So that should make perfect sense, right? Great. Um, there's something special about the dry bulk storages and I will show you that now. What is special with these guys? I will show you like, this. The dry bulk conveyors are the only conveyors that actually care about power. Because there's stuff in here, but this guy's not loading anything because the building itself is without power. All other storages, all other passive storages do not require power for you to load it. They will load slower, but they will still load. So um, that's just the thing for loading or unloading, same. Once we supply power again, this guy's going to slowly fill up and then drop it off over here. And then we can just see what happens. This building is directly connected now to this storage and this storage. I emptied out all of them uh, to show you what's going to happen next. Um, and it's the same as every other cargo scenario as well. Everything, every building that is directly connected to the building that you're dropping off into will get an evenly distributed amount of the cargo that's being distributed at that point which means everything that's dropped off here will be evenly distributed into this um, storage and this storage. It doesn't matter if this is a cargo station of some sort or a storage of this or something else. So it can always drop off stuff right here. As you can see, even, 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 even. There is one more very important thing I have to show you. It has to do with the engine and the two levels that it can push through. So now we have these three uh, bulk storages set up right here. We have the factory here still running and the engine right here pushing the levels. We look at this guy right here. Once this one is full, there is a problem and this is the same for all other cargos as well. It will only let you 
push through until the first level is full. Once the first level is full, nothing moves through anymore. You have to empty this and then um, more cargo will still go through here like it did before. But until then, um, you have a problem. So you just have to make sure that your level one is never 100% full. And you can do that with distribution offices or other things, however you want to set that up. But this is the same for all other cargo setups um, as well. And that is that. At this point, we do not have dry bulk conveyor engines that have three in, one out. So I don't have to worry about what materials these can move. And the only two materials that exist right now for dry bulk are cement and aluminum oxide. I do hope that grain will be part of this eventually, but it isn't yet. So we'll just have to wait. Um, that's all. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys learned something. I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.